My next guest has had an enviable career, from appearing in wrinkled tights at the National Theatre to crumpled bedsheets in Hollywood Wives. It's Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Well, there's lovely to see you, as they say in Port Talbot. Yes, indeed, to goodness. Great country. Have you found that the Welsh voice has been a great asset to you? Welsh it? voice? Uh, in America, I think it has, because the English accent, I think, seems to irritate them after a while. And I don't think they could quite place me. Uh, they used to say, well, where are you from? I'd say, Wales. Where's that, in Ireland? So I, <laughs> instead of explaining to them, I'd say, well, sort of, you know. Mm. And, uh... Some, they used to think I was German and, uh, or Austrian or something. Why? Because I, of the way they, you sounded? They couldn't quite locate the accent. Yeah. And they'd say, oh, well, it's uh, Richard Burton is, and, they, and all that. Mm. Uh, because I come from South Wales. Um, so, anyway, it stood me in good stead. Yes. yes. But what was that line from Under Milk Wood? Praise the Lord, we're a musical nation. A musical, a, a music was your first love. An ambition, wasn't it? The piano? Yes. I wanted to be a pianist, but I, I'm, I'm afraid I simply wasn't good enough and I didn't have the... Uh, skill or the patience to practice. Anyway, I've started all over again. I'm going to start taking lessons again. So I bought a Steinway. And uh, so I'm uh, doggedly teaching myself and I'm going to start taking lessons again to go right back to the beginning. I love music. I love playing it. Of course, you're a Welshman. You're, you're a music Can't musician. Can't sing, though. Ah, well, there's, there's a rock singer, Monkey, over there. Yeah, a, yeah. a rock singing monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but insults on this oh, program. I, I, I've got something to say. I also don't like Nouvelle Cuisine. I can't stand it. It's ridiculous, isn't it? And little demi comes comes across. Right. right. <laughs> so we don't like Nouvelle Cuisine. Yes, yes, I am. I am. I'm a rock singing monkey. Yes, I do. I, do. <laughs> I just wanted to establish that. That was all. Well, I just, I, I mean, I, yes, I mean, I love singing. Yeah. yeah. I'm amazed you can't. I thought I really did think all oh, Welshmen. No. And you don't like rugby. Don't like rugby. I'm not really too. Uh, I'm not You're really. Not a Welshman. I'm more of a Welshman. Don't than like you are. rugby. Don't drink beer. I don't. Uh, I don't sing. It's pathetic. And I've never uh, appeared in uh, Dun and Thomas. Uh, I've never done. Dun I'm beginning to regret. I asked you. Oh, no, actually. yeah. <laughs> 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 of course. But you mentioned Burton, and of course, the inevitable Burton comparisons. Are you alike in any way? I don't think so. I used to be compared to him a lot when I was. Uh, a little younger, but uh, I, I don't know what the comparison was. I think because we come from the same town. In fact, I only met him once, and it was in the same dressing room in Equus in New York, in the Plymouth Theatre. Um, I don't know why they compared me to him, but I, I, I suppose it was something to do with the accent, because we come from the same town. And, and temperament. You, I mean, you have a, a fiery... You have a yes, I have, a, I, I have been noted to uh, fling a few chairs. I used to have a pretty volatile temper, uh, but I think that's a, a dead end, so I... I've managed to get control of that now. I don't take things as seriously as I used to. You so took I... it very seriously when you were at the National. It was your oh, temper yes. that got you out of that. Yes, I used to walk out and do things like that. But I, 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 as time has gone by, I think a little bit of uh, ageing and a little bit of uh, <laughs> wisdom or something, and I think, well, you know, mellowing and all that, mm. I think, well, I mustn't take it too seriously. So I'd, uh, I, I get an edge on that now. Nevertheless, it must be useful as an actor to have that kind of uh, Oh, as an actor, yes. It's trem tremendous because... Um, I'm sustained by a lot of energy on stage. I mean, mm. I, it's just one of those gifts, I suppose. I don't know what, whether it's uh, ch sort of channeled rage, mm. but uh, Very I don't let it get a grip of me now. And unpleasant characters are more juicy, <laughs> of course, and you, you are good at that. Well, yes, I, I, I've uh, been given some monsters to play. I'm playing one at the moment at the National Theatre called Lambert LaRue. But I love the monsters because they are the greatest parts to play. And how, do you create, how do you create a monster, then? Well, I suppose I must have a lot of monster in me. I, uh, well, uh, how can I... Uh, the, the part I'm playing now, um, I think you have to believe and find a, a, a core of the character that you really love, that you really like. After all, I think they're much more interesting characters than mm. the, good, uh, the good guys. I read but it was based on a mad teacher you knew. It was, actually. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, we had a history teacher who was a bit of a sadist, and he used to knock us about. And he used to walk around like that, and he used to come up very quietly beside you and say, what did you say, and then... Bang. Oh yes, and uh, and he used to he used to uh, he used to wear uh, he used to wear suede. Um, we used to call them brothel creepers, big suede shoes. <laughs> and he used to sidle up; you could never hear him. Mm. And next thing, you'd be on your back, and he'd knock you out. His name was Pinky White, and I based the <laughs> character on him. Mel, what about the characters that you've uh, developed? Most of them are fairly 
unattractive. Not to, uh, they're not person. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, uh, I, I think actually that's not altogether true. I either get asked to play things which are kind of, you know, like in particular comedy, really bumptious things and sort of jolly things, or very, very nasty, heavy people. That, yeah, that is true. But it means I've got twice as many chances of getting staying in work, I guess, which is, uh, which, <laughs> which is quite nice. And Brit, you've just been required to look good. Yes, but uh, I'm getting a little too old to play Swedish opera girls and a little too young for Dynasty, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. There go. <laughs> Is it true, Anthony, you were offered the part of Gandhi? Ah! <laughs> yes, believe it or not, I was, by Richard Attenborough. I thought he was mad. He, uh, I went and had lunch with him. So I could, uh, he's, he's, do you know him? He, he's yes. terrific. He's, he's a very funny man and uh, he makes me laugh. And we, I've done three films with him and we laughed all the way through. But he said, um, now, I want you to play Gandhi. Love. I said, Gandhi? I want you to play Gandhi, love. I said, Gandhi, you must be good. This is a comedy. Who's going to play Pandit Nehru, Harry? <laughs> I said, no, he should be wonderful as Gandhi. I said, me? I said, I look like a Welsh rugby scrum, you know. I... So uh, he got to my ego and my vanity, and I thought, well, if he says, he says, you can do it. Of course you can do it. You can do anything. I said, wow, terrific. And I went to a health farm to try and lose weight. And um, I did everything. Ran up and down the sides of mountains and uh, the sauna baths and dieting and all, and I kept looking at myself in the mirror, I wasn't getting any slimmer. <laughs> and I phoned him up, I said, uh, I'm afraid you have to scrap the idea. I said, you must, I, I'd only do your from a great disservice. You must get an Indian actor and you must get somebody who's slimmer. I said, I could never play it in a month of Sundays. Mm. And he got the marvellous actor, Ben uh, Kingsley. Yes. I, I, I don't know if you remember Griff's and my performances in Gandhi at all. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you Were you off of Gandhi? We, uh, we were, no, we, we played Poppadom and Japati, the comedy <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, in, and, 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 and Dickie's asked us to be in Gandhi, ah. to, Gandhi 2. <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> now, with the sexier parts, that we talked about the Gandhi part that you didn't play, but this, with the sexier parts that you have done, um, like in A Married Man television series and Hollywood Wives, you have acquired this much more romantic image, haven't you? Yeah, I was rather surprised by that, uh, because I've always played monsters and the bad guys, but uh, Hollywood Wives came up because my agent he said, uh, would you like to go off to uh, America and do Hollywood Wives? I said, well, what's the script like? Is it pornographic? He said, no, have a look at it. I looked and I said, well, yes, all right. Are they going to pay good money? He said, well, I think so. So I said, well, let's have a go. And uh, I, had a, I did it for what it was. I mean, I enjoyed it and uh, it was a lot of fun. Everyone was very nice to work with. Uh, but uh, well, I started off in the acting business and I was always playing older parts than I actually was. And it's only in recent years that I'm playing <laughs> roughly my own age now. It's interesting, though, that, um, that sexuality or height or whatever it is you think you haven't got doesn't seem to play a, a part in what women find attractive. And I must ask Britt about this. What do you find attractive in a man? What makes a man attractive? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me choose. Um, well, I mean, what, what? obviously, I'm very happily married, so my husband, to me, is probably the most attractive man. But I am not adverse to a man's charm. I mean, I, I find Anthony very attractive. Oh, thank you. I do. I mean, I'm not for be big, beefy, you know. No, 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 not round. <laughs> Muscle types. I, I don't oh, find I them attractive. I, I don't like men who put on a, a suit and they can't move their arms. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like men with baggy eyes? Uh. <laughs> I was looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, answer that. don't answer that question. Let's talk about America, because you've all had experience of that. And you went off to America, didn't you? You've lived there for some time. What was yes. the big, big appeal? Well, I went to New York, first of all, uh, to do a play, and then I went off... Uh, I, what I liked about uh, the Americans is that they, they, uh, they find that we apologise too much. They don't apologise for anything. They say it straight. And I, I remember once I apologised for asking for something. I was asking a producer... Uh, for a certain request about the theatre, and I said, I'm sorry to bother you. He said, why the hell are you sorry? Do you want it or don't you? And I said, oh, yeah. He said, OK, well, say it. Mm. And I learned a lesson. I thought, don't apologise all the time. And I, I mean, I suppose they can take rudeness to the point of, uh, 
lunacy, but um, they do get on with it. They, they say it straight as it is. And I think we do in this country tend to... I see I'm doing it already. I think we do, I say. Mm. We tend to apologise too much for ourselves. We put ourselves down. And um, I think we miss a lot out. Yes, we, we, we over here seem to distrust people who are successful, don't we? That they're over America, in America, of course, they think it's a splendid thing all the ah, time. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. to live in Los Angeles, you almost have to be successful. Now, at least the visual thing, the house, the rolls, the maids, the tennis courts, these things. Now, we don't know how many holes there are in these, which are first mortgage, second mortgage, third mortgage, etc. We don't know how much of this they own. When they told me that you can actually take your automobile that you have and go and get a loan on it, you don't have to own it or pay for it, you just get a loan on it. I couldn't believe it. So a lot of it, I think, is on very shaky grounds. Yes. What about the, the politeness side of it, this direct quality? <clears throat> Mel, you were nodding when we were talking about that. Well, uh, yes, because what Anthony was saying is absolutely true. It wasn't so much that I was apologising. The first time I set foot in New York, uh, getting off a bus at Port Authority, and I walked straight across to a bar, and I, and I said, I'm going to have my first daiquiri in New York, which is a, a drink I liked, and I couldn't wait, and I walked into a pretty rough bar, and I went up, and I said, could I have a daiquiri, please? And everything stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really stopped, you know. And, of course, uh, you're going to say, give me a daiquiri. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that's ah, not exactly yeah, apologising, it's just very, very direct. But this have yeah. a nice day thing, yeah. it's, it's very shallow, isn't it? I mean, they say have a nice day, and they presumably mean it, but if something goes wrong, the attitude changes instantly over there. That's what I've found. Yeah, but it's, if you take France, in France, if you say something and ask for something, they say sans prix or service, it's the same thing. It's just like, you know, it's mm. a snappy thing to come back Instinctive with. Instinctive response. We don't say anything here. But what about Hollywood, Anthony? I mean, did you, when you went there, did you, how did you get into this, how did you enjoy the social world there? Well, I, I didn't do very much of that. I, I think the rules of the game when you, when, you join, uh, when you live in Hollywood is to understand it is a game and uh, that it's not about money, it's about uh, status, as they call it, or uh, what's the word? Yes, status. What's yes. the word? Status, Power. status symbols. Um, you know, status symbols, that's yes. right. And uh, prestige and all that. And if you understand those rules, you can live a pretty good life. Uh, and so I didn't get that involved. I went to a few... Uh, award ceremonies or a couple of parties, and they were fun. You know, I sat back and enjoyed them. I remember the we went to one of those Betty Davis uh, uh, film award, and there was a great to do about all this. And when they finally gave her the award after all this long speeches, it fell to pieces in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh what did she say to that? Uh, she looked very surprised. <laughs> I can imagine that. But how crazy then? is Hollywood still? I mean, it, does it resemble the old idea, the mad people be going to excess the whole time? I think it's just like Hollywood wives, actually. I, I, I mean, I, I think... I, I mean, the, 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 that was banal, but, I mean, the, it, it, there is a, a, a shallowness, there is a, a, a glitziness about it, but um, if you look at it and accept it for what it is, it's, it's all right. It's, and I, I think if people take it too seriously, say, well, it's terrible living out here, well, then they shouldn't go out there. Yeah. But Britain's... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Tony, you, you, you were... No, I think it's terrific. If you know what you want out there and, and enjoy it, you can have a, a, a whale of a time. And I did. I, I, I loved it in California. We had 87 degrees at Christmas, for Christmas yeah. Day. 87 degrees? 87 degrees. My husband and my son were playing ping-pong outside. Ah, that's terrific. Now, yes. how can you complain about that? Mm. You can't. And Mel had an Australian Christmas, did you? I had 103 degrees. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I think that no, that, no, I am lying. It was it was 103 degrees about two days before Christmas in Sydney. No, it would be because it's, it's the summer season in yeah. Australia. Well, I've met the three degrees if that helps. But, <laughs> it's not much to do with it. but fan of all this vulgarity, as you say, can be fun. I mean, you like you've done what you call the gutter stuff, yeah. you know, Hollywood wives and all that. But it's fun, isn't it? And and yes. and, and junk food can be fun and all yes, these things. Yes, it's terrific. Knock it too a much. little bit of vulgarity is very good, I think. Are we, no, I mean, if you go on taking things too seriously, I mean, I, I, I left the National Theatre some years ago because I was standing around becoming a very respectable actor. And if you, you know, in, in tights and doing, you know, holding spears and all that, I think after a while you think, oh, God, you know, let's get on with it. Just have a, have a bit of a laugh because it's all entertainment. And mm. uh, I can't take anything. One thing I learned from America, I hope, is not to take it seriously at all. And, uh, I just like that enjoy. attitude. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a great I, attitude. Very much. Yeah. Very yeah. Wonderful people moment have that of attitude. unanimity. Really. Accord. No, actually, it's been a great joy to talk to all of you, Anthony and Britt and Mel. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for your company as well. See you next week. Good night.